So I have my infertile witch, what can I do about it? We talk about the mating, we look for infections. If mating is okay, we can talk with the owner about what's the use of vaccination for herpes. Herpes has to be vaccinated twice. Once in the beginning, and you can vaccinate it a week before or a week after mating. Personally, I prefer to do the vaccination before mating to be certain that the vaccine itself will not interfere with the fertilization of the egg cells or the division of those fertile egg cells, the fertilated egg cells. A second injection is needed in a bitch when she's pregnant, uh, in the two last weeks of pregnancy. So when she's not pregnant, you don't have to give the second injection. Because antibodies produced by those vaccines stays in the body for a very short time, it has no use to give the vaccine in prevention uh, of all, or in a yearly base as you do for the other germs. We only use those vaccines really the moment we need them. If we found some the presence of uh, infections, then we will give a treatment in two uh, ways. First of all, locally, uh, we put a non-irritative unguent at, as deep as possible in the vagina, so that uh, the vagina will be disinfected. But we do this until two or three days before mating. We stop in time to be certain that the male will be not disappointed uh, from a changed smell of the vaginal discharge due to, due to our medication. The second way to treat is in general, we give uh, oral medication uh, depending on the antibiogram that we had from the lab and we give uh, those medication in, until mating has ended. So sometimes we start up on day four of the cycle already, but when the bitch has an ovulation only on day 25, we really continue our medication until day 25 or even beyond until mating has ended. The use of hormones in uh, infertility problems um, is uh, not often used because hormones have uh, practically always uh, severe side effects. And if really things don't work out, we sometimes uh, need to use artificial insemination because the male won't uh, uh, mate or the bitch is not willing to be mated, for example. Artificial insemination, we can perform this in several ways. We can use it in a fresh or chilled semen and we do that on a normal time as we should perform a normal mating. Uh, we put the semen deep into the vagina and therefore we use an Osiris uh, catheter. This is a catheter with in front a um, cuff, a little balloon, and this balloon prevents the reflux of uh, semen uh, to the outside world and will stimulate vaginal contractions so that the semen is forced to uh, pass the cervix um, and come so directly into the uterus. The semen itself is collected by masturbation and an uh, experienced stud dog will uh, produces semen, ejaculated semen, in a very quick way. And the semen in dogs uh, is ejaculated in three fractions, and it is the second fraction, that is the sperm-rich fraction, and it is this fraction that we really need for insemination. An insemination that we perform after microscopic evaluation of the semen, uh, to be certain that quality is good, concentration, viability, vitality of the, of the semen, that uh, 
uh, the semen is good enough to be inseminated. Dissemination itself is easy, bitches normally will not react uh, and continue to stand still on the table at the time we do the insemination. Insemination of the frozen semen is another story. Because frozen semen stays alive for a very short time after thawing, max 12 hours, we need to inseminate at the time that the egg cells are fertile. So certainly 48 hours after ovulation. So we wait for our six nanogram, where we talked about, and then we wait 48 hours. Most of the owners pull their, their hairs because they don't want to wait as long as this, but you have to wait, otherwise you will inseminate too early and the sperm will be dead before the egg cells will be fertile. Second thing, those sperm cells has not enough viability and vitality to pass the cervix. So we need strictly an inter intrauterine deposition of the semen. In the Scandinavian countries, they use those catheters, those pipettes, metallic catheters, and uh, they have a technique where they, where they pass the cervix uh, with this catheter. Um, but it's a procedure that's only been done in Scandinavian countries because it's very difficult and dangerous even for us when we don't have enough experience because we can give perforations. The reason they are able to do so in Scandinavian countries is due to the fact that they work a lot with foxes and they cross silver foxes and blue foxes who will not mate on a natural base uh, and all those uh, matings are performed uh, by insemination in this way. So we look for another way to uh, inseminate the uh, taut frozen semen. And another way is a surgical procedure. That's the easiest way. Therefore we put the dog asleep, we do a little surgery, we take the uh, uterus and we inject the semen directly into the uterus near to the oviducts. But in some countries, this surgical procedure is forbidden for ethical reasons. Uh, so we have to look for other um, procedures and nowadays there is right to do uh, the passage of the cervix uh, under endoscopic uh, guidance. But also this is very difficult, takes a lot of time, the dog is not always standing still and the results are not as good as they hoped they should be. So in practice we see on regular basis empty bitches with a history of false pregnancy. The owner, the breeder, saw that this bitch uh, had all symptoms of pregnancy but she stayed empty. And there's al always the question, of, yeah, she's empty, but she has a false pregnancy. What's the influence of the reason of false pregnancy on fertility? There is no influence. Because the reason that a bitch has false pregnancy, or the symptoms of false pregnancy, is due to the fact that progesterone level drops decreases and due to the fact that the progesterone level decreases other hormones like milk producing hormones can rise and some bitches are clinically or yeah they <coughs> are uh, sensitive for those hormonal changes and will develop symptoms of uh, false pregnancy now we only can have a drop of progesterone here when initial there was a rise of progesterone. So when you have a rise of progesterone, we only can have a rise of progesterone when there was an ovulation. So the only conclusion that we can make in a bitch with false pregnancy is she stayed empty. There's a reason why she stayed empty, but she did have an ovulation. The only problem that we see 
uh, according to false pregnancy is a higher incident of incidence of uh, mammal gland tumors. So therefore, uh, we advise owners of uh, false pregnancy bitches to uh, use drugs to block the milk production as soon as possible to minimize the negative effects on the mammal glands. The last item that I want to talk about is uh, what you have to do with uh, motherless puppies. Most of the cases, motherless puppies are fed by a bottle or a syringe. This is a very intensive job. It takes approximately 20, 15 to 20 minutes per puppy. Um, there is a risk that the pup will swallow some milk into its lungs and uh, that can cause uh, pneumonia problems and even that of the puppies. So there is another way to feed those puppies and you can do it by a catheter. You take the puppy, you take a catheter and you put the catheter into the mouth of the puppy until the catheter reaches stomach. It's easy, it's quick, it's cheap, there is no risk that some milk will uh, come into the lungs and you inject uh, the quantity of milk you require directly into the stomach of the puppy. The time you feed, the time needed to feed a whole litter takes as long, as much time as otherwise you feed one puppy. So why not to use a catheter? Those motherless puppies sometimes have a mother with a lack of milk production. So sometimes there is ask, what can I do to stimulate milk production? And a drug as Primpran can help in stimulating milk production. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that it takes some time, a few days, for Primpran to give its action uh, in producting, uh, to the gland in producing milk. So start in time and use it in advance. There's only one advice that I can give. Don't give an overdose of Primpran because the side effect of an overdose of Primpran can be that uh, it stimulates aggressivity of the bitch. You can become aggressive and kill a whole litter. So, and we did advise, I want to thank you 